Eric Darling here with Darling Data, uh, recording this video with uh, Camtasia <clears throat> because uh, uh, I tried recording it with Streamlabs again and shockingly did not go well. Uh, I listened to the whole video and about three quarters of the audio managed to drop out. So uh, we're going to stop doing that uh, unless I can find some really incredible way of fixing that issue. And in this video, where the intent is a rather tongue-in-cheek video, is to talk about why NoLock is my favorite query hint in all of SQL Server. Now, uh, the first reason is because I am a consultant. In other words, I get, I get paid to fix problems, and no-lock is a big problem. Generally, the more no-lock hints that I see when I look at code, I can, I can abide a few of them, but generally the more no-lock hints that I see when I look at code, the more money I know that I'm going to make. I know that I'm going to make more money because the developers are going to need a lot more training. No one who knows what they're doing puts no-lock hints everywhere. Uh, the code is going to need a lot of tuning because no, no code that runs quickly needs no lock hints everywhere. And the indexes are going to need a lot of fixing because especially for modification queries, if they were finishing quickly, if they had good indexes to find the data that they were after and they don't need to modify a bajillion indexes in order to complete their work, well, they'd run pretty quickly too. Now, granted, there are certainly exceptions, like if you're using the, the, the help hit known as merge, or if uh, you know, you're, for some reason, trying to modify a kajillion rows at once, that could certainly hamper things a bit. But you know, in general, most normal workloads, merge is an abnormal part of a workload, uh, uh, need my help <laughs> for that. And um, I think the, the, my, probably the thing that uh, gets me the most excited, though, is that there are, I know when I see no-lock hints everywhere that there are going to be serious bugs in the software because you're going to be reading dirty, crappy data from dirty, crappy tables. Okay, the tables aren't dirty and crappy, but the reads are. And when that happens, you're going to read bad data, and that bad data is going to end up in results and possibly used to do other things with no lock hints that are also based on bad data. And there's just going to be a lot of bad data floating around. And the more bad data floating around there is, the more chance of there being bugs in results and logic and all, this, all the other good stuff that makes an application run well. I think the only thing that I can hear from someone that makes me also see cash registers floating in the sky is, we're an entity framework only shop. Because when I hear that, oh boy, start looking at private jets. Another reason that I love NoLock is because no one actually knows what it does. Even though when I, I point it out and I say, hey, developers, how come there's NoLock hints everywhere? Someone will stand up with uh, uh, the, all the confidence in the world, all the confidence in the known universe, the the Padishah Emperor of Confidence. <laughs> and they will say, so my query doesn't take any locks. And I say, and I stare at the camera for a while and I say, uh huh, well, bad news. Um, it's not quite it, you know, no lock queries will still take that schema stability lockout. Uh, but really the, what the no lock hint does is the, the same thing as the, the read committed, read uncommitted isolation level. And that is read bad data that is in the middle of being changed. Now, uh, uh, you could see the same rows with the same values twice, depending on what columns you're selecting. You could uh, likewise see the same rows with different values twice, depending on what columns and rows you're selecting. And you could also miss rows entirely with it. Now, granted, I do grant you this, that you can, you, you can run into a lot of that with the read committed pessimistic isolation level, which uh, I, I, I find really not, not far off in its despicableness from the read uncommitted or no lock isolation level. But um, yeah, 
it, it's it, it it really does make things crappy and you know in highly transactional systems that can really cause all sorts of bugs problems uh, issues and uh, best of all one of my absolute favorite things in the world to do is turn on read committed snapshot isolation the reason I love doing that is because I get to turn it on and in 2019 I also get to turn on, turn on accelerated database recovery so I use the local version store rather than tempdb which is phenomenal love accelerated database recovery probably one of the best features that's landed in SQL Server and I don't know how long but the best part is I get to turn that on and hang around and I get to delete all those no lock hints and all those set transaction isolation level read uncommitted and I get paid to do it and I could keep doing that forever and ever will I look at private jets. <laughs> and uh, probably the, the third and final reason why I love the no lock hint is because I get to keep talking about it. I get to keep talking about it and writing about it and producing blog content about it and video content about it along with like, well, I mean, there probably used to be hundreds of other bloggers. These days, they all work at Microsoft and don't do anything with themselves. Uh, aside from work at Microsoft, it might be down to like a dozen or maybe two dozen bloggers <laughs> that can still write and record videos and make content about how crappy NOLOC is. And a lot of them are consultants. And most of the time, no one listens to you until they're paying you. So as a consultant, who makes a lot of blog and video content, and who gets paid to fix these things, I love the no lock hint. It is the gift that keeps on giving. It's like, it'd be like if you opened up a bar slash bail bond shop across the street from a courthouse, people would just walk by and golf clap at, at your prowess in securing a prime location for your two businesses. That is what no lock, having no lock in SQL Server is like. It is phenomenal. It is amazing. It, it, like I, I want to thank Microsoft. I want to say, thank whatever like original database standards committee said we need a way to give people bad data for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, it, 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 is, it is miraculous that uh, no matter how much blo blog blood and ink is spilled and dedicated to telling people and teaching people about why no lock in like 95% of cases is a bad idea and not what you want to use and not what you want to be doing, people still will tell you that it's a best practice and they're like their, their company's coding guidelines or like you're not allowed to have a query without it. Uh, I've, 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 been to, I've, been, I've worked with some clients where uh, with, with no lock was a keyboard shortcut, pasting it in. Uh, it, it, it's truly a thing, it's truly a mystery. Like it, it'll, you'll see it in like, like, like modification queries. It is truly astounding and miraculous. And uh, again, uh, I, could, I could fix that all day long because it's really easy for me to fix that. And you won't need no lock hints anymore. And you'll wonder what you ever did without me. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't think, I'm not sure my wife even knows that. Might, she might wonder how she, was, how she ever thought that uh, she knew what true annoyance was <laughs> without me. Anyway, um, thank you for watching my inaugural video with Camtasia. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope the tongue-in-cheekness of this video came through. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like amusing, fun SQL Server content, uh, subscribe to my channel so that you get all the bling 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 notifications whenever I drop one of these amazing videos and uh, yeah I think I think that'll just about do it uh, thank you again for watching and uh, I will see you in another video real soon With, depending on how long it takes me to render and upload this video and uh, and, and make sure that all the audio and video is okay in it well could be even could be sooner than later. We'll we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Anyway, thank you for watching.